Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Shubham, and in today's particular session, we are going to talk about the herbs palsy. So now, before understanding the herbs palsy, we need to understand some basics about the brachial plexus, right? Yes, brachial plexus. We are very well aware of that from our first year onwards. That brachial plexus, uh, it is actually located in the upper arm region, or you will say in the shoulder region, right? Now, in this area, we are talking about several kind of uh, structures for example if we will be subdividing our brachial plexus then we can say that in this particular session right uh, in this particular area we can say here we are talking about the roots okay then if we further divide then we will talk we are talking about the trunk in this area right in further if you will talk about then there will be the divisions in this area right i am just talking superficially and then uh, below that we are talking about the cords right so this is the particular division uh, of the brachial plexus i will just remove it right so this is the basics of the brachial plexus but what i want to say is that if you talk about the roots then we are having c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 right so these are the branches right and then we'll say that we are having upper trunk middle trunk middle trunk and the lower trunk then lateral cord posterior cord medial cord okay this is the anatomy part now if you talk about the herbs palsy related to that we are having the herbs point right so herbs point where is this herbs point located actually this herbs point is located over here okay so this is the point probably where the herbs point is located and this area is affected if you are talking about the herbs palsy right so basically this upper trunk is affected in the herbs palsy and if you talk about the uh, branches then c5 and c6 is basically most importantly affected over here in the herbs palsy right what are the nerves which are affected in the herbs palsy very commonly asked question so nerves you will be answering because i'm talking about the herbs point over here this is the herbs point okay so just writing over here this is the herbs point right so distal to this herbs point the nerves will be affected for example for example just removing this herbs point okay once you know this so right this is the herbs point we you know that now which is the nerve look over here which nerve is this one this is the supraclavicular nerve sorry suprascapular nerve right can you see this nerve over here like yeah this one this is the musculocutaneous nerve okay and one more uh, nerve which is distal to this herbs point this is this one this is your axillary nerve so very important question which nerve which nerves are basically affected in the herbs palsy your answer would be supra scapular nerve musculocutaneous nerve and the axillary nerve right you answered the first question second one is that uh, in the herbs palsy what part of the hand is getting affected so the shoulder is getting affected forearm is getting affected right basically the whole hand will be affected in the herbs palsy whatever side is involved right second thing i will talk about that in detail as well then what you need to know next is that we are having uh, in the brachial plexus uh, roots trunks divisions and cords i have told you about that already now let's say why this herbs palsy might happen okay so let me tell you herbs palsy patient or herbs palsy baby okay or herbs palsy child will be looking like this in this area what you can see is that yes due to the damage in the brachial plexus right what happened is what branch c5 c6 okay what has happened herbs point might have damaged and distal to that nerves they uh, distal to that area the nerves will be involved suprascapular nerve musculocutaneous nerve and the axillary nerve now due to that nerve damage okay what will happen the arm will be looking like this okay this is the disabled arm in the disabled arm you will be seeing this kind of deformity this kind of structure you will be seeing in the baby now the brachial plexus in this area has been damaged and basically the house point has been damaged usually it happens because of the stretching of the brachial plexus right or due to the traction let's say there was shoulder dystocia during the delivery of the baby right and obstetrician tried to do uh, this maneuver that you know holding the uh, head of the baby and trying to you know trying to uh, extend the shoulder in that case let's say the shoulder was not coming out 
from the pelvis of the mother so you know we uh, we might actually or obstetrician might actually injure the brachial plexus during that procedure okay so due to that uh, due to the traction in this area as you can see due to the traction in this area right in this area so what might happen it can lead to damage of the brachial plexus if the damage of the brachial plexus will be happening in the herbs point near the herbs point in this particular region then obviously what can happen this kind of deformity can be seen which is named as herbs palsy okay this is very easy now let's talk about the detail in the herbs palsy that if these nerves will be damaged for example suprascapular musculocutaneous and axillary nerves if they will be damaged why this kind of deformity which you can see in this hand why this kind of deformity is happening right so <clears throat> i told you three nerves affected over here okay so three nerves affected which are the three nerves affected over here okay so this is the first of all let me tell you that there is a herbs point which is actually damaged right so injury injury at herbs point injury at herbs point will lead leads to will lead, leads to abnormal function or loss of function abnormal function or loss of function distal to that area right so this will lead to what herbs palsy it will lead to herbs palsy right now i told you what are the nerves affected in the herbs palsy very important so nerves which are affected in the herbs palsy nerves which are affected in the herbs palsy is very easy to understand because distal to the herbs point the nerves will be damaged which are the nerves suprascapular nerve first of all so just writing over here that first nerve which we were talking about that is a suprascapular nerve now the interesting part is suprascapular now the interesting part is that suprascapular nerve is actually you know supplying two important muscles what are these two important muscles guys first one is your supraspinatus supraspinatus muscle this you know from your anatomy part supraspinatus muscle and the second one is the infraspinatus muscle second one is the let's say b is the infraspinatus right now supraspinatus actually if you talk about supraspinatus is actually supplying uh, suprascapular nerve is supplying the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus supraspinatus function is the abduction of the shoulder function of supraspinatus is the abduction of shoulder abduction of shoulder right and function of the infraspinatus is externally rotating the shoulder okay function of infraspinatus is external rotation of shoulder external rotation of shoulder right if i am saying suprascapular nerve is damaged then obviously supraspinatus muscle supply will be damaged infraspinatus muscle supply will be damaged so definitely abduction of shoulder will not be able to happen external rotation of shoulder will not be able to happen first thing secondly okay first of all let me just tell the overview okay so that we'll combine all these things and then we'll try to understand why this baby is having this kind of hand appearance right so suprascapular nerve i told you then second nerve was the musculocutaneous nerve which was damaged uh, which was distal to the uh, 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 distal to the herbs point and that's why it is involved so musculocutaneous nerve cutaneous nerve so this was also getting damaged musculocutaneous nerve so this was damaged and it is supplying which muscle it is supplying actually two muscles over here again a and b let's say right so musculocutaneous is actually supplying biceps right and it is also supplying the brachialis 
break here list. So, what happens is that biceps for that you know what is the uh, function of the biceps right it is doing the forearm supination and flexion it is doing the forearm it is doing the forearm supination and flexion supination and flexion and what is the function of the brachialis it is also doing the flexion it is also doing the flexion of the forearm so that is the thing if the musculocutaneous nerve is damaged then obviously this supply will be damaged bicep supply and the brachialis supply will be damaged and due to that what will happen right due to that obviously their function will be getting damaged so obviously biceps will be brachialis will be damaged so forearm supination flexion will not be able to happen obviously right so the flexion and the supination of the forearm will not be able to happen due to this nerve injury third thing i told you that axillary nerve is also involved right third thing i told you that axillary nerve function will be gone as well so if the axillary function now will be gone then obviously whatever muscle it is supplying which muscle it is supplying axillary nerve it is supplying the deltoid muscle so a it is supplying the deltoid muscle and it is supplying the teres minor yes it is also applying the teres minor so both of these muscle supply will be gone and what is the function of this muscle supply the functions will be that deltoid is actually abducting the shoulder so abducting the shoulder so abduction of the shoulder will not be able to happen abduction of shoulder right and teres minor is responsible for externally rotating the shoulder so external rotation of shoulder will be compromised external rotation of shoulder will be compromised and if you guys remember i told you that uh, suprascapular nerve was also supplying the supraspinatus infraspinatus and function was same abduction of shoulder external rotation of shoulder was not able to happen because of suprascapular nerve damage same thing will be happening to the axillary nerve also that if this function will be gone then definitely deltoid and teres minor they will not be able to perform and that's why abduction of shoulder will not be able to happen external rot external rotation of the shoulder will not be able to happen right so due to the if i will combine these three things if i will combine these three things so i will understand that obviously the abduction of shoulder will not be able to happen external rotation of the shoulder will not be able to happen flexion and supination will not be able to happen as far as forearm is concerned right so if i will you know summarize this picture if i will summarize this picture then you know at the level of at the level of shoulder what will happen at the level of shoulder just writing over here at the level of shoulder what will be happening first thing at the level of elbow what will be happening right and at the level of uh, I would say forearm what will be happening right very simple at the level of shoulder abduct abduction is not happening external rotation is not happening so that's why you will be seeing that adduction is happening right and internal rotation is happening as far as shoulder is concerned this will be the effect because abduction is not happening so what will happen adduction will happen external rotation is not possible so what will happen internal rotation will happen if you talk about the elbow then at the level of elbow you know i told you that the forearm you know function of the musculocutaneous was forearm supination and flexion so this function will be gone so that's why instead of supination pronation will happen instead of flexion extension will happen so that's why elbow what will happen at the level of elbow yes elbow will be extended elbow will be extended so extension of the elbow with that extension of the elbow will be happening at the level of forearm pronation will happen at the level of forearm pronation will be happening right so this will be the story of uh, this will be the story at, uh, at the level of shoulder elbow and forearm right okay once you have understood this that shoulder is abducted and rotated elbow is extended and forearm is pronated this kind of picture you will be seeing that so here what i can see again you can see that there is a 
uh, adduction you know you can see that there is there is adduction and internal rotation of the shoulder adduction and internal rotation of the shoulder right you can see at the level of elbow that there is extension there is extension right and at the level of forearm there is at the level of forearm, forearm there is pronation so this kind of appearance will be called as this kind of appearance is called as policeman tip deformity this kind of appearance is called as policeman tip deformity or some books call it as waiter tip deformity okay or porter's tip deformity right because of this appearance right as if the policeman is asking for a tip or the waiter is asking for a tip that's why they named it as policeman tip deformity or the waiter tip deformity very commonly tested in the various kind of mcq examinations right so this is about the basically of palsy so i told you what are the particular reasons basically either it can be due to shoulder dystocia during the delivery of the baby brachial plexus might get injured near the ops point and due to that distal to that ops point ops point nerve might be affected which nerve might be affected very very important very frequently tested in the mcqs that is the suprascapular nerve which is affected right musculocutaneous nerve which are affected and the maxillary nerve which are getting affected okay you must know their functions which muscle they are supplying and what are the function will be lost due to those functions if you will be remembering the functions then obviously that function will be damaged opposite things will be seen in the hand of that particular patient for example adduction internal rotation at the level of shoulder pronation at the level of forearm and extension at the level of elbow this kind of appearance will be typically called as the policeman tip deformity or waiter tip deformity or the porter tip porter tip deformity and this uh, you know at the level of baby or pediatrics this might happen due to the shoulder dystocia or difficult delivery of the baby or difficult delivery of the fetus at the level of adult if i will say then you know du du during the trauma due to the accident if uh, if the patient will be falling in such a manner that brachial plexus is getting you know stretched and getting torn due to the accident so again this kind of appearance might be seen in the adults as well due to the brachial plexus injury right i hope this video makes sense to you and uh, in the next video i will try to talk about the clumkies palsy which is the next palsy which might happen uh, due, due to the injury of the brachial plexus so that's it about this particular session i will see you in the next one thank you so much for sparing your time bye bye take care